uh, by looking at us awkwardly and with expectation and joy, we're ready. So this is the Oprah Winfrey part of, of the, the <laughs> Have you got one of those friends? <coughs> you can have a great golden chair. Yeah, well, you can. Well, uh, <laughs> in case I'm lucky, I might fall off the couch. But um, um, we've, we, we've warmed up for this, we're ready for this, and we're having some good questions. So um, keep, keep your question thinking brain coming. And we've got some, a whiteboard full of notes. Sorry, my back to you. Um, but we are really, really lucky to have people who are willing to share themselves. Um, I know it's you, when you share yourself with a group of people, especially if you don't know them, it's really hard and it's precious and it, you give a bit of yourself away. So um, I'm, I'm really, really grateful to be sitting on a couch with you guys with, and, and I, I, you folk, yeah. This is, was my mission, is to stop using the word guys as something that was non-gender specific, because it is. So, you folk on the couch, welcome. Thank you. Sure. Um, now, we're gonna, we have some pre-prepared pre questions, and I'm going to invite, um, as we go through the first set of questions, is to introduce yourself um, with your answer, um, just so that we can get into some really good discussions. So... Our first wondering was that what was it, or given all of the people you have here in front of you today, what is it that you'd like school leaders to know about, and what would have supported you while you were at school? Um, we're going to start with Gray, because Gray is closest to their school experience. <laughs> this Gray. Because they're actually awkward having two Greys on the couch. <laughs> And then, so we, we, I don't get, get confused. What we're going to do is we're going to alternate. We're going to gag. We're going to grey, airy, gag, grey. Okay? G A G, right? So that'll help me keep, keep me think, keep focused. You're struggling. You're I am you're struggling. struggling. <laughs> I need to work on my on my couch patter. So, grey. Yeah. Kia ora. Uh, I am grey or Grayson. Uh, my pronouns are he, him, and I am a out and proud trans man. Um, oh, I'm 18. <laughs> um, what was the question again? <laughs> so, school leaders and schools, what do you want them to know? How could they have supported you? Um, for me, I went to an all girls high school. <laughs> the silence <laughs> explains it all. Um, <laughs> no offense to the all girls high schools. <laughs> for me, um, what would have helped is for my school to actually know anything about the LGBT community. Um, they pretty much knew lesbian and gay. That was it. Anything beyond that, it was a lot of confusion amongst the teachers, a lot of, oh, you're just going through a phase. Don't, you don't know what you're talking about. Um, so it would have been helpful if they had any kind of knowledge on our community. Um, if they dealt with bullying. Uh, I was severely bullied straight through high school. And every time I went to a teacher or a counsellor, they were pretty much like, oh, well, you must be doing something to wind these people up. It's always like, it was always my fault. I could be sitting there minding my own business. And I had one occasion where a student poured toilet water over my head to try and baptise the gay out of me. And I went to the teachers and they were like, oh, well, we can't really do anything, um, which was really hard. Um, and there was a couple of other trans people at my school. The teachers often compared our transition. And uh, I had one teacher tell me that this other trans man would actually pass when he fully transitioned, but I would never. Everyone would know I was a girl no matter what. I soon dropped out of school after that conversation. <laughs> so yeah, just um, basic respect. Kill her, Grace. Would you like some tissues? <laughs> Thank you. Ari, do you want, would you like to? Pick, I can. I can. To pick up. Yeah. Uh, so, as a non-binary person, I went to Christchurch Girls High. Um, I'm not. A sh I, I'm fine with knowing that I went to the same sex school. Um, uh, through our high school, I was what I was talking to Lisa just before about. It, I was what's called stealth. 
I've known from a very young age that I wasn't a girl, but when I was in high school, there wasn't even a QSA. There was no same-sex sex education. The word lesbian, especially in girls' high, because of that great Christchurch tale that Peter Jackson <laughs> made a great <laughs> film into. Um, the first question I got asked when I was outed at school by bullies was whether I was going to kill my mother. Um, I said I hadn't decided yet. <laughs> um, she was also a teacher at that school, so that's even better. Um, but I knew that it would be a burden for everybody else if I was to come out as a trans person. There were no other trans people who were out when I was in high school, and now there are over 10 who I know who were in the same years as me, who we have reconnected and congratulated each other for surviving high school. Um, I think, coming off what Gray had said, the prior knowledge, like we don't want you to start learning about it when someone comes out. You should already know. You should already have some sort of <coughs> pocket of information that you have. Because like Jordan said and like Lex said, they're already there and they're coming. Uh, obviously statistics show that there are more and more gender non-conforming people in high schools. They've always been there, but now we have the language and the resources and the courage to actually be authentic. So having that prior knowledge, even just like the tiniest bit, would be life-changing to a lot of kids, I think. Yeah. Um, I, did, well, I went to an all-boys school. Um, I'm not going to name which one, but the, the, the basic premise of it was to be a man. Like, um, failed at that. Oops. Um, <laughs> failed fabulously. Oh, oh dear. I think in the best way. In the best way, yeah. yeah I failed upwards. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I, I didn't come out at high school. Um, I didn't come out until I was at university. Uh, 19 I came out as non-binary and I was still figuring myself out and then found myself again as a trans woman at about age 25 um, so you know and I'm 29 now so high school was a little bit of a I have to pull it back and go what happens then um, also I have rep feel like I have repressed a lot of it mm -hmm. um, because being in an all-boys school and hearing the kinds of things that boys talk about especially in the way they talk about girls um, as a trans person in that space is uh, it's time um yeah <laughs> i i didn't necessarily know that i was trans in high school though i only ever thought that i had was weird perverted um the only kinds of ways that i'd ever seen transness described was in what, what we'd seen in media, which was either I was going to be a laughing stock, um, a serial killer, or be murdered as a sex worker. Because um, that, that's all that trans women were shown as in media, and it was always trans women. Like, the trans representation in media has always been focused on trans women, because we are seen as a spectacle. And especially in, a, in an all-boys school, um, to, be, to be anything less than the most manliest of men <laughs> is um, is just a ripe target for bullying and hatred. Um, so I stayed clear of that, and I also was, what you could say, was stealth. Um, stealth even to myself. Um, I repressed it hard um, when I was in primary school and we were learning about puberty. Um, uh, I remember being 11 years old and saying to myself, because I, we weren't taught about transness, that I will never be a real girl. Um, so I just have to be the best boy that I can be. Again, I failed at that, so you know, like, uh, um, <laughs> yeah, but I think that's the thing, like, it's, it's, it's and, and the, the, 
the only, um, I feel like I'm just giving anecdotes at this point. Um, the only sort of thing that I remember about sex ed from high school, um, the only thing queer related was in year 10, and it wasn't even brought up by the teachers. Teachers, I, if a teacher, I got, got everyone to put in like what, the, you know, what I think what genders their parents were. So maybe they were trying to do a thing, I don't quite remember. But the only time, only way that it came up was somebody put in as a joke, because it's an all boys school, I have two hot lesbian mums. Um, so, um, and then she was like, yeah, that can happen. And that was kind of about it. And that's the only kind of sex education around, um, you know, anything, anything in the LGBTQIA plus community that I got. So I had no idea that transness was a thing. I had no idea that who I, that the way I felt and the person that I am was anything other than sick and wrong and some weird fetish that I had or something like that. Um, so I, I, the thing I would just say for schools is just, is, is that need to educate, educate and, and like teach these kids that, that gen gender is so much more, more of like what we learned about with the genderbred person and going into that kind of idea and those ideas and that discussion around being more than just male or female. If I had had, um, if I had had that kind of education in school, I probably would have left the boys' school, to be honest, um, and gone to a different school. Not because of not getting the education, but because I would have realised that I was a girl and I would have gone to a different school. Um, or if they had supported me, that would have been great. Because um, I know Christ College a few years back did have a trans student come out and she was supported at the school, which mm. was fantastic to hear. Um, yeah, I think that's the end of my rant. I don't really know. Just on a yeah. <laughs> side note, I remember as a child, uh, probably you will as well, Ray, it's not it's, uh, not as modern, I suppose. I remember in schools we used to talk about the, the melting pot of people of different cultures and different colours. And lo and behold, we didn't turn out to be racists, right? Mm. So if you taught gender in the same way, people would supposedly come out as more accepting people because they've been taught it as normal. Yeah. Like, we've done it for years. So it's just adding more to your toolkit of teaching. I mean, I can say from leaving school last year, that all we learned at high school in sex ed was, you're a woman, this is how to get pregnant, don't do it while you're at school. <laughs> That's what we were taught. Yeah. And we, it, at an all boys school, you get taught you have a penis, um, don't get girls pregnant. Um, <laughs> There's a broom handle on a condom. Yeah, oh, yeah the broom handle, the banana. Yeah, we got broom handles. Wow, well, I think we got bananas. Oh. Yeah. Snacks. Yeah. We got fake dildos. <laughs> <laughs> but wooden ones. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. so I'm hearing your narratives <laughs> shifting from. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hearing the narrative shift from survive to thrive. Yeah. Um, and that's crucial, um, and that's, you know, largely down to us. Are there any other tips that you could give us, you know, for to thrive? Yep. Email Rose. Yeah. Yeah, just Email Rose. inside out. I, I want cards. She's got cards. She's got some resources that you have to fight over because we didn't bring all of them, but you can download them. They're worth the read. Rose is your go-to. She will come to your school. She'll do the mahi with you. It's, and also she's cool, look at her. Um, but just, you're allowed to ask for help from outside sources. Yeah. Um, I was just gonna say, if you have a student come out to you in any way at all, the first thing you don't do is call their parents. Oh, don't. Oh, yeah. Because that student might not be out to their family because that place could be dangerous. Or maybe they just, you know, haven't gotten around to it yet. But the minute you take away their choice to come out to their own family, that student's never going to trust you again and you will lose any chance of that. And they'll go and tell their friends that, oh my God, this teacher did this to me. Don't come out to them, they'll do the same thing to you. And then that's just more students being forced to mask their true identities. Um, um, we'll move on to the, our second question, which is, what does transition mean to you? Um, and this is a, a learning space for me. Um, can we start with you, please, Ari? You can. 
Thank you. Surprise that's all right. Um, so, just in an English sense, the word transition comes from the Latin word transire, which is to go across. However, it, the word itself in Latin focuses more on the journey itself rather than the end result. So, for me personally, it is the unapologetic journey of authenticity. God, that's a hard word to say. Um, so bringing, because most people, I think, assume transition is from one to the other. Mm. However, I think it's important to validate peoples who experience going one way and then going back. Detransition is very valid, but if that person is supported throughout it, what is the harm? Um, for me, it is bringing, uh, aligning my inside gender expression with how I am perceived on the outside um, through hormones, surgery, clothing, crazy hair colours. I'm a makeup artist, so crazy makeup or whatever. But generally, transition is unapologetic authenticity to me. Thank you. Um, far Grey. Far Grey. Far Grey, that's my new name. <laughs> well, um, building on Ari's point, like, transition is a journey. Like, mm. like it's, um, but yeah, like it isn't, it isn't going from one to the other, but for me, I sort of see it as um, a chance to, well, it is that journey to become the person that we always were. You know, like, um, children develop gender identity at about age three. That's when kids will start to say, I'm a boy, I'm a girl, or like they might, or, if, you know, if we're trans, might be like, oh, I, I don't know what I am, or, or that sort of thing. Um, and that's how obviously you get trans kids, and like all of this talk around puberty blockers and that kind of thing, which are safe, by the way, it just delays. Um, I feel like I'm getting into my educated, educated, <laughs> Educatory rants. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, but so that so we get trans kids because gender identity develops so young. Um, and I like transition is, I find like just this beautiful experience of figuring out who you are and living that authentically, unapologetically, proudly, um, and it's just fun. <laughs> it's just Bye. fun, like, just, just to be able to, like, um, no holds barred, like, not even worrying about what anyone else thinks of, of who you are or what you, you look like, just getting to be you and be what feels right to you, like, um, it's fantastic. And I always, I, I think as well, like we're, we're all on our own journeys as well. We're all figuring out who we are and who we are trying to be all of the time. Um, for us, we just have a slightly different journey to figure that out. Um, and like with all of the hamperings and, you know, the, the way the tra transness is unfortunately us going against the grain, going really against society. So we have to fight back against that. And in doing that, we really embrace who we are. Um, so I, I say like for everyone's journeys, like screw what society thinks, do what you want to do for you, you know? Yeah, that's, yeah, that's, that's my rant. <laughs> Loving your passion. Oh, I have so much passion. <laughs> Gray the Nera. <laughs> Nera. Um, for me, I guess, I always knew I was a boy. But given the circumstances I grew up in, I was never allowed to express that. And for me, transitioning is just not being scared to express that anymore. For a long time, it was I was too scared to wear nail polish. 
I was too scared to dye my hair. I was too scared to do anything that was deemed feminine because then that's how society would perceive me and I would only ever be a girl. But I've gotten to this point in my life where it's like, bro, if you look at me and you think that person's a girl and that person's straight, then fuck, you need your eyes checked because <laughs> <laughs> I don't see that. I see, I see myself for who I am and I'm glad that I can finally do that. And I just, yeah, it's being proudly myself and having the support to do that and the support to teach other people the respect and the values that they need to have to give us the support because we can't transition these journeys alone despite what we may want to do. We are always going to need some form of support. And we're moving into passion and joy. And I guess that's the last um, pre, pre, pre-scripted pre question, which is, um, yeah, share, tran- share what trans joy, thriving, all of that wonderful stuff means to you. Um, and can, far gray. Can, far gray. Far gray first? Okay. All right. Far, far gray. gray first. Trans joy. I'm going to sit up. trans joy is the best feeling in the world like I love it (laughs) like uh, gender euphoria like you hear about gender dysphoria all the time like that's that's how hard it is to be trans and oh my gosh my body doesn't feel right and that kind of thing um the the flip side of that is euphoria and it by god it is the most wonderful feeling in the world to see yourself being the person that you've always kn- known, you being the person that you've always known you are is incredible. I, yeah, I always, I give, I give a lot of talks at Ada um, because she's been on the back of a bus. I've been on the back of a bus. I love talking about transness. But one thing I always really love to say is that everyone should be able to practice gender euphoria. Like everyone should be able to find what is. Um, what they love about themselves, what makes them feel good about themselves, what like, yeah, I look, I look really cute in this skirt today, it feels great. And just enjoy, enjoy yourself, enjoy being who you are. Like, we only get one shot at this life, and by God, I'm gonna like take it by the britches and be, <laughs> have the best goddamn life I can have. <laughs> um, yeah. And yeah, gender euphoria and just joy, the joy of being trans, the joy of being being in this different like perspective of life is, is really humbling, is really incredible. Um, the trans community is so beautiful and so fun and a little bit bitchy at times. Um, <laughs> but generally like just such a great bunch of humans because we've all gone through this hardship, we've all fought really hard to be who we are, and we just get to revel in the absolute joy of, of who we are. Yeah, and that's, that's me. That's me ranting down. I'm sitting back down now. <laughs> Sorry. Um, seeing as we are gagging, we're going for me now. Um, I think simply trans joy to me is bravery. Um, just I know that going against the grain in any sense of the word (coughs) makes you a target so my courage to be that is where I find my most joyous moments I like having uncomfortable conversations and I don't mind being that tokenistic sort of I'll tell you because I'm quite bolshy and I'll tell you when you're wrong but um (laughs) Yeah, my, my trans joy is definitely my courage to be authentic. And like, grey, some, the far grey. <laughs> it summed it up so just how joyous you were talking about trans joy. Like, you, I don't need to say anything, you can see it. Like, that's what it's like being happy and authentic and knowing yourself as much as a normal person would, because we have been told that we are not normal, I think explicitly states our joy. And, like, 
I'm going off you, but sorry. Um, do you know euphoria is for everybody? You know when you put on that like that great pair of pants and your ass looks great and you're like, I'm hot. That can be for anybody. That is gender euphoria. When you put on that, that new pair of shoes and they fit and they don't wear your feet in and they don't hurt your feet and you're like, this is sick. I love this. That's what we want to experience. If it's me putting on a binder or someone putting on a dress, it shouldn't be harder for us because we just want to be the same. But yeah, trans joy is everything far gray just said, sitting on the back of the couch, getting very joyous. That's that's definitely trans joy yeah. right there. I have boobs now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Just to I'm go. so proud of you. Thank you. I made them myself. Wow. <laughs> this gag, you're last. I was waiting to make sure you're done. I'm done, yeah. For me, trans joy is looking at the pictures of me as a kid and telling that little girl that she made it, mm. telling her she doesn't have to fight anymore to be seen, and just being able to look at myself and see, yes, I went through a lot of shit, a lot of shit a, ch a child should never have to go through. But you know what? Fuck it, I'm here. And those experiences have made me who I am today. I'm more powerful for it, and I'm more brave for it. And I honestly, yeah, I hate what happened to me, but I wouldn't... I wouldn't change that because now I know how to be a better person and I know how to treat people better. And for me, trans joy, it's taking what these two lovely <laughs> humans have said. It is, it's looking at yourself and being like, fuck, I look hot. So I make sure I do that every morning. I go out to my mum and I say, look at my ass. I look fucking sexy today <laughs> and the rest of the world has to see this. So that's what I do. I go out and I show everybody how goddamn sexy I am because... Their eyes bloody need it. <laughs> <laughs> I just, for once, I can finally look in the mirror and just love what I'm seeing looking back at me. Mm. Authentic messaging. <laughs> <laughs> you don't mince your words, do you, bud? <laughs> <laughs> um, do we have any follow-up questions? You've, you've had three different perspectives on three different um, questions. Is there, are there any immediate... Please, please tell me more about this. Um, yeah, you talked about um, representation in the media. Do you have recommendations for um, young adult novels or um, films that our Tamariki could watch where they get that? <coughs> oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm a videographer at my day job and an you know, um, emerging writer director. Um, so I do have recommendations. <laughs> yeah, Gray, what are you working on? Oh my god, well, I am actually working on a transgender um, short film which has been funded from the New Zealand Film Commission, so that's pretty good. Yeah, it's about a transgender woman coming home to come out to her parents, and it's a psychological thriller. Um, <laughs> because, in my experience, coming out to your parents has been a psychological thriller. <laughs> um, but yes, recommendations like, um, I am not the most avid reader. So I don't have many recommendations for recent books. Jordan over here has been sending me a whole lot of books, which has been fantastic <laughs> recommendations for, for um, like um, just LGBT literature in general. Um, however, for um, film and television, there is this fantastic documentary on Netflix called Disclosure, which I highly recommend everyone go home and watch tonight for homework, um, because it is, it is all about transgender representation in film and television over the last 100 years. It is, again, quite heavy, um, and we, we see like how these stereotypes have been built and built up and established, like, um, like, that, like I mentioned earlier, the serial killer like, motif, the, um, the laughing stock, or the tragic victim. Um, so that, that's a really powerful watch. Um, and then also how we're breaking that down, and it is starting to change, thank God. Um, and the, the other piece of content, which I do really, really, I'm really excited to say, is um, actually a local New Zealand television show. Well, it started as a web series, and then it was, um, it was re-released its first season as a film called Rurangi. 
um, it's yeah, it's, it, it's beautiful. I worked on the second season of it in Auckland, so season two is coming. Um, it was on Neon, currently it's not available, so um, you can't really watch it anywhere at the moment. I've been hunting. Um, you can actually, because my mum watched it the other night. Oh, did? Where? Where? Neon. Is it, neon? Is it back, neon. On? back on? It's on Neon. <laughs> one second, one second. <laughs> While Grace is finding it, I used to work for Inside Out as the campaign Horns, what am I saying? Campaigns <laughs> coordinator, where um, out on the shelves is their yearly campaign for um, rainbow literature. So you can go just Google out on the shelves or go to Inside Out um, or go hunt down Rose, she's easy to find in her bright dress. Um, <laughs> there is a rain, like a whole bunch of literature, non fiction and fiction. Um, I would definitely recommend looking at TJ Clune. Um, um, there's also, uh, the. I'm sure half of you, most of you will have heard your students talking about Heartstopper. <laughs> it, yep, uh, Heartstopper. <laughs> I'm very excited for the second season to come out on Netflix, but it is a series of comics. Um, out on the Shelves has a library resource where we keep a record of books and classifications, so we go through every letter in our little mafia, and you can click asexual, and it will give you a list of asexual books. Um, we also did bookmarks that have book recommendations on the other side of them. Uh, Rose, do you know if we still have bookmarks? I don't think we do. We have old bookmarks for books that were like of our previous years, but they are the new ones were better because I designed them. The <laughs> uh, so you've probably better looking online to see what the most recent ones were, because otherwise we're like a couple iterations prior. But also Alphabet Book Club. Alphabet <laughs> Book Club is fabulous. My dear friends run it. They have a really cute dog called Remus. He's a little corgi. He <laughs> checks all the boxes before they're sent. I would de definitely recommend reaching out to them. They have a great resource because they read all the books that they talk about, so they know it back to front. Awesome. Uh, another question? Oh, is it on Neon? It is on Neon. It's on Neon. <laughs> Go watch the movie. It's beautiful. It's about this transgender so man who, um, who has basically skipped town from his rural hometown and moved to Auckland for 10 years, and now he's come back. And it's, it's that whole journey of coming out, um, coming out to family, to friends, and re-establishing himself in small town New Zealand as a transgender man. It's beautiful. It is. It handles trans transness so well, and um, I can't wait for y'all to watch it and watch the second season. I'm so excited. My my voice makes a cameo. <laughs> <laughs> cameo. Exciting. Question. I have a question from the paper. Uh, so. What's one thing that your teacher allies did? Or did they do anything? That, um, is there, you know, um, reflecting on if, if surviving the school experience is what I'm feeling, uh, um, were there moments of light and support? I can say yes. Okay, so that's can good. I. Yeah, you, um, you go. Not, not for my transness, because it was, I obviously did reiterate that I was still. I used to purposely get English homework detentions to hang out with my English teacher um, because it was a safe space because I knew that she was part of the community. Um, she definitely caught on to what I was doing because I <laughs> I did, I did studied English in university. I'm good at English. I wasn't needing the homework detentions. Um, and it became a running theme that I would get a homework detention and just go and have a safe space, but also knowing that she was part of the rainbow community made me, I was like, oh, there's, there's hope. I can still be, unfortunately, a statistic, the hardest statistics, but also know that maybe there's a chance that this could actually work out. Lo and behold, it did. Hi, I'm still here. Um, but yeah, so when you guys come in and you put your pronouns, with your name tags. That immediately says to me, that person's probably safe for me to come out to or give my pronouns to. So the tiniest bit of visibility and understanding goes 
the longest one. Did you hear one? Yes, I did. Oh, the best teacher in the whole school. God, I miss her. Um, she was my classics teacher, amazing woman. She was teaching us Roman classics and she made a point of being like, even the Romans were gay. <laughs> like, come on. It's true. Yeah. They were, like the men were sleeping with the men and if they didn't sleep with the men, they were like frowned upon for not sleeping with the men. It was great, it was fabulous. And she like made a point of pointing out all these like, well, this God actually was a woman when he lived on earth and now he's a man up in, up in the Olympus, you know? And she just made a point of like normalizing it in our class. And she was really good about my pronouns and name and everything. She didn't out me to my mother either, which was great. She was like, yes, this child, <laughs> this is a great student. She's, yeah, great teacher, love her. I went to an all boys school. <laughs> <laughs> it sums it up. They haven't had the greatest reputation, especially this school. Um, Toxic masculinity ruins the top, party again. Absolutely. Oh, nice. I mean, the only thing that I, because I, I wasn't out in any shape or form in high school, and I'm a lesbian as well. So like back then, I thought I was straight. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> Out of disgust. <laughs> um, but I do remember that there was one teacher who tried to set up um, an LGBT club, um, and I hope I, I I was never a part of it. But I hope some students went to it. But I also know that it was like mocked a lot, and like. I, I remember as well, like having students like, in my class and that sort of thing, making jokes and like doing dares that if you lose this, you have to go to the gay club, you know. Like, um, so it was kind of good that that teacher was again just one, one teacher taking it on himself to to establish that that group. Um, but yeah, wasn't that that was about it. <laughs> um. I think it's important that this small you by showing that tiny bit of visibility or allyship is potentially saving a kid's life yeah mm. like i don't want to be like too heavy but i'm not kidding like no. the statistics around suicide attempts and also completed suicide specifically in our community is awful specifically just in new zealand youth is awful so you should be doing everything to try to have that not happen. It's a horrible statistic. And just by saying your pronouns, you could potentially have a kid go home and decide not to. So there you go. Um, sorry, to, that was my question to follow up. Just wanted to ask Fargray, when you got to university or like later Fargray. studies, what was the thing that um, helped to, was there somebody there who helped you to affirm yourself that we could have done in like a younger age group as well. So we're friends with more people. girls. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well. yeah. I think um, I think at that age as well, like um, university is a place where you, you are able to pr pursue higher thought, I guess, as well, and also, also like it's a place where there was a certain amount of anonym anonymity mm -hmm. to it. Um, and yeah, I, I don't really know what like. Really <laughs> okay, just thought I would double check. Yeah, no, I appreciate. Yeah, that's good. Mm -hmm. Okay, our, our challenge is clear. Um, they've they've, mm -hmm. they've, get, they've set the wheel for us. Um, I invite you to come and talk with them at the conclusion of this evening. They don't bite. Um, they don't bite. Wow. <laughs> Maybe, <laughs> but. Um, I've learnt so much in this short period of time, particularly shifting my my understanding in of what of trans joy. I, I love, mm -hmm. I love, I love what you shared. Um, so iti ranga iti ranga moto um, fakaro moto korero moto kaha ngami hinunui ki akoto. Thank you very much for sharing. Um, you can see the passion, you can see the love, and you can see. Um, the difficulty of the challenge when you, um, you sit in front of people. Can we all share our <laughs>